Greetings. This is Time Rider at Chapter 4. What you're looking at here is a number 44C GMC refrigerator lorry, which is, of course, a matchbox staple that is invariably missing the back door. First of all, no laughing at my manpowered rotating table. My new ones haven't arrived yet. I don't think it's possible to collect Matchbox without latching onto a few of these. I think I probably have four, and they're almost always missing the back door. It was introduced into the Lesney catalog in 1967. Believe it or not, it was converted into super fast, although I can't see these being super fast at all. Uh, and it was deleted in 1971, so invariably it wasn't super fast. But at any rate, it's not a particularly sexy restoration. But, uh,. I decided I'm going to do it anyway, just because I like the doggone thing. I don't know what I paid for this one. I'd have to figure out which one it is, but I can tell you this. It was just a couple of bucks. So, anyway, sit back and enjoy. All in all, the casting was in pretty good shape, except for paint chips. One of the reasons I decided to do this one is because the bumper was fairly intact. Uh, not unlike the Leyland caps, these bumpers have a tendency to break. The little end pieces break off from being played with. Again, it was missing the back door, and you know the top of the model itself was uh, was pretty hacked up. But other than that, uh, everything was straight, and it looked like a pretty good candidate for restoration. The model is actually three pieces. Uh, there's a front piece that's held on with a standard post which I'll drill out here using a smaller bit and then a larger bit uh, and then it just pops out just the front part of it does. The front of the refrigerated chassis was held on by two small pins inside the cab as well as a tab on the back of the bottom chassis. So what I did was I uh, took my drill bit and very carefully ground away at these two small tabs until I was able to separate uh, the, the reefer portion of the truck and then I just used a small flat bladed screwdriver to release the tab on the back side. To remove the tires I decided that I'd just use a needle nose and squeeze on the narrow end of the of the axle until I got the burr down far enough to pull the wheel off. And then after removing the base underneath the cab, uh, I decided since that post was so far into the back of the uh, cargo area and there was so little material there, uh, I decided to just drill right through the chassis and then I would just tap it. Uh, it's going to be way inside the reefer portion of the truck. So, uh, drilled it out right through the bottom like that, and then I tap the hole. So now we get to the point where we're going to uh, slather on some stripper and get rid of the paint. You know, I really like this citrus stripper. It, you know, a lot of times stripper will like burn your hands and stuff but uh, this stuff is not particularly caustic I still try not to handle it just because I don't want to have stripper on my hands but uh, it's actually a, a, a pretty good product it usually takes care of the job uh, if it doesn't I, then I use aircraft stripper which is very caustic and I don't like getting that on my skin at all but um, this this took care of the job And you can see here after uh, just a few minutes, uh, you know, the paint is just uh, rubbing off with the brush. I did wind up 
uh, putting a second round of stripper on the reefer portion of the model. Uh, but it came off pretty good at that point, too. And then a little bath uh, in some sudsy water uh, to get the rest of the paint off. At least as much of it as I can. So now I'm taking a pick here and what I'm doing is I'm scooping out some uh, red paint so that I can uh, try to do some color matching with it a little bit later. I did wind up using aircraft stripper on the, the cargo area of the model and here I am I'm actually trying to scrape some paint off here too uh, so I can do some color matching on the turquoise. So now here I am with my uh, soft bristled brush and my rotary tool. Uh, this was pretty straightforward, lots of straight lines. Uh, although all the paint didn't come off with the stripper, the brush took the rest of it off uh, fairly easily. It wasn't a particularly intricate model, it was kind of a lot like doing a dump truck where you got all those uh, raised railings. You know, Lesney is really big on that. And of course I get off the screen a little bit here. And uh, here comes the cab. Uh, same treatment. Uh, trying to get into the windows, make sure I get everything out of the, the windows themselves. There's some ridges on the top of the cab that uh, needed to be cleaned up. You know, he, whoever it was, the designer who who put the uh, like the fender skirts over these rear wheels? They they really suck. And if you're doing one of their eight wheel jobs, <laughs> lots of luck with that. Fortunately, this only had two wheels on the back, so it was fairly easy to do. I always like to do a really good visual inspection after I get the paint off because it seems to me that you notice things when you're looking at the bare casting that you might not notice if it had paint on it. Um, this casting was pretty good but if you look in the center of the windshield there there's like a casting burr. A lot of times I'll just leave those on because they're kind of a part of the original casting. I don't know what that thing is. I think there's a fuel tank on the other side. Uh, but that other deal, I don't know if it's a tool kit or what. Um, but clearly I must have found a little paint in there. But um, And there we are back on those fender skirts, which I love so much. I, I don't know what I love more, the trailer hitches or the fender skirts on the truck. So anyway, uh, back to that. Uh, on this one, it was such a visual distraction, uh, I just decided to file it off. So uh, I got one of my small files here and just started uh, working on it, figuring it would it would just look better without it. Like I say, a lot of times I'll just leave these casting imperfections because to me it's like a part of the character of the model uh, and a sign of the times. You know, something like this would probably never survive uh, in today's technologies. I know there's a lot of people who do restorations that super glue these screws on. I use a, it's a rubbery adhesive and uh, I don't like using super glue on them or any hard glues. I had uh, somebody suggest once that I use, uh, you know, a white glue, but I, I just don't think that's a good idea. Uh, they were suggesting using it for gluing in windshields. And there's a lot of people who say, well, I don't, I don't prime because the original factory didn't prime. But the guys at the factory were dealing with brand new castings that weren't scratched and they probably had painting methods that were a little better than what I have in my little workshop here. Uh, the primer helps fill in imperfections and it improves paint adhesion. So I'll always prime. If I was doing uh, 
you know, Hot Wheels with Spectra Flame Paint or something, I might not. But uh, when I'm doing Matchbox with I do when I do that, I use either acrylics or enamels, so I always prime it. And I always want to get at the bottom really good to make sure that uh, you know I get the insides of the wheel wells and because uh, I'm probably going to paint the whole thing. Well, the only thing on this I'm not going to paint is going to probably be a portion of the inside of the refrigerated compartment and uh, maybe the roof inside the cab. But that's about it. Everything else is going to get paint. Paint mixing is actually one of the things that I like to do. Um, partly, I guess, because it's kind of challenging. And turquoise and teal and colors like that are, you know, they're kind of complicated to do. So what I started with here is I started with some X14 Tamiya Blue. And then I mixed it with a little bit of X5 Tamiya Green. Now, I suppose it all depends on how you look at it. I think turquoise tends to be more of a blue-green than a green-blue, if that makes any sense. Uh, so anyway, I mixed those two together and then uh, looked at it as compared to what I had. I thought it looked a little too green, so I added some more blue. And it looks like it's getting a little closer, but... Uh, wasn't quite right, so I decided to throw in some X2 white because I needed to lighten it a little bit. It was just a little bit too dark. Um, that actually looked like it was getting pretty close, but uh, I thought a little bit more white might help. And that's starting to look real close there. I was going to put a little yellow in it and decided, nope, I'm just going to put a little bit more white. I have a lot to paint here, so I'm actually using kind of a lot of paint. But when you think about it, the cargo area on that refrigerator truck is pretty large. Uh, you'll notice I always shoot a little bit of paper towel first. If you watched my review on this single stage airbrush, uh, one of the things I noted is that if it's going to splatter at all, it usually does it right when I first start shooting. So I have started putting a paper towel in the booth with me, and then before I start shooting, I just take a shot at the paper towel to make sure I don't get any splatters. And I usually keep a uh, thinner soap Q-tip handy too, just on the off chance that it does. Uh, it doesn't splatter a lot, but it happens. But I think that the overall quality of the paint that I'm getting is better than I was getting with my dual action, which is a finicky, fiddly piece of business in my mind. Uh, if you don't get your paint mixed exactly right, it comes out sandy and uh, or splotchy. And uh, I've heard I've heard that from so many different people. So uh, I tell you, I don't regret buying this. Uh, this single action air gun airbrush at all. I've done a few models with it now that you'll see coming out over the next uh, week or so. And uh, man, it, it just does a wonderful, wonderful job. And I did a video on cleaning it that I'm going to tack on to the end of uh, one of the models that I'm doing. So I think I nailed this turquoise pretty damn close too. I mean, as, as close as one can get. In you know, mixing paint for these things is kind of an art. A uh, hundred years ago when I did this for a living, um, that was a science. Somebody would come in with a color code and you'd open the Ditzler book and it would say so much of this and so much of that. Uh, what we're doing here though is, is really trying to eyeball it and come up with a close approximation. And I'm sure Lesney had a formula and I'm sure they had a name for every color. Uh, this one I have my own name for. I call it Fred, the paint guy at Lesney, got lucky last night red. Because it's a happy red. It's not a deep and somber red. And it's made simply by taking red and mixing it with yellow. But not so much yellow that it turns orange.
and I'm gonna throw a little bit of white in here just as a pick-me-up because maybe Fred had a drink with the dinner last night see and I know what you're thinking too you're thinking well that doesn't look like a happy red that looks like a deep somber red but it's really deceiving because when it dries and you see the final result uh, you'll see what I'm talking about uh, it, it dries much brighter than it is here here it does it looks almost almost like a maroon but uh, it's not a maroon trust me it's Fred is happy today red so while the paint is curing I need to give uh, other parts of the model some attention there aren't that many but uh, the windshield is one so I'm gonna take the Novus products that I brag about all the time and uh, I don't get any money from them step one is a cleaner and then uh, step two is a scratch remover they have a step three I don't have step three I don't have the the product and a little dab will do you just like Brill Cream. Those of you who remember what Brill Cream is, well, God bless you, you probably drank out of the garden hose too. Put playing cards in the spokes of your bike. And I got done and I thought, you know, a little bit more here on the side here and then I think I gotta dip it. Yep. I think I'm gonna have to dip it. So out comes the floor wax. Because I'm going to dip it. Dip it, make sure there's no bubbles. Then wick it. Oh, wasn't happy. Try that again. Wick it and then cover it because the stuff's a dust magnet. And now it's time to do something about those tires. So I'm going to make me some tire wash. A little bit of black paint. A whole lot of thinner. And I didn't want to take the front apart because I didn't have to. So I'm just going to do this with a brush. And the back wheels, they're going to be a lot more simple because they're off the axle. So uh, I'm going to brush those too, but we'll just do it right here on the paper towel. It makes them look so nice. So I know that there's guys who say that they don't use clear coat either, but that's eh, not me. Everything gets at least one coat, and it protects the paint. And as I've said before, acrylic paint tends to be kind of fragile if you bump it with anything you wind up getting a nick and e even with the clear coat and I, I don't know maybe if I leave the thing cure for three or four days that won't happen but I guess I'm just too impatient I let the paint cure for a day or so uh, then I put the clear coat on then I let that cure for a day or so and then I assemble the model so maybe it's on me but if adding clear coat uh, affords me some protection I'm gonna do it I also think it makes the colors look better but that's just me to each his own I guess so I know I didn't show you any assembly but that's because it was me snapping the top on and putting a screw in and not much more than that so let's take a look at where we started and again, you're not allowed to laugh at my turntable. I did get a note from the post office today, though, that says that the uh, Chinese company wants my signature. So tomorrow morning, I will head down to the post office and pick up not one, but two rotating jewelry display tables so I can stop trying to rotate this thing with my thumb. But here's the final reveal. There it is. The matchbox. 44C with a back door from Steve Flowers model supplies on eBay 
the 44C GMC refrigerator lorry. So take a minute to click the bell if you haven't already. Please subscribe. Comments below. This is Time Rider at Chapter 4. And I'll leave the light on for you.